we are go for main engine. In 1990, NASA launched the Hubble Space Telescope to unravel some of the mysteries of our early universe. And off of the Space Shuttle Discovery with the Hubble Space Telescope, our window on the universe. Hubble promised scientists unprecedented views of the young universe. It would be able to look back through space and time and examine early stars to discover if they were making new elements. But the dream soon turned into the worst nightmare. After it was launched, they discovered that Hubble's mirror was distorted. It saw everything out of focus. It needed corrective lenses. And the only way to fix it was to send up another space shuttle. One of the repairmen was astronaut Jeff Hoffman. We were working with a $2 billion telescope, and the last thing we wanted was to break something and leave it worse off than when we got up there. First, the crew of the rescue mission had to capture the crippled telescope. Then execute a repair mission unprecedented in the history of spaceflight. First, they had to open the access doors on the side of the telescope. The one thing about working on Hubble that is very different from working on a car is you look over your shoulder and there you are in space. And the Earth is going by below you, the, the stars above you. The astronauts had to carry out fine, detailed work in the most difficult conditions. When you're working in a space suit, your hands are encumbered by thick, stiff gloves. It's sort of like working in ski mittens, and it was quite a challenge. All went well until Hoffman attempted to close the huge access doors. I just had to close up the doors, and when I went to close them, they wouldn't close properly. The doors were somewhat warped, and it took a while for it to sink in. This was very serious. If you can't get the doors closed, you lose the telescope. Using improvised tools, Jeff and a colleague were finally able to close the doors. It took the team five days to repair the stricken telescope. Cosmologists around the world held their collective breath. They waited to see if the most expensive telescope ever built would deliver what its designers originally promised. I well remember New Year's Eve, 1993, December 31st, when my phone rang, and it was an old friend who worked at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. He said, Jeff, you have any champagne left over from your party? I said, yeah, we still have a half bottle in the refrigerator. He said, well, Crack it open again and drink a glass because we got the first picture back and Hubble works. This is what Hubble saw. The images were beyond anyone's wildest dreams. Hubble captured the final moments of a star's life when it explodes and blows off gas and dust. It also captured interstellar nurseries of newborn stars, exploding into life billions of years ago and dark pillars of cosmic dust, millions and millions of miles long, ready to spawn a new generation of stars and planets. I guess it's hard to surpass the famous pillars of creation in the Eagle Nebula, where you actually see the birth of stars. I mean, it, it's almost biblical, let there be light. And I still kind of get goosebumps when I look at it. But Hubble's true moment of glory was still to come. Over a 10-day period in 1995, the mission controllers pointed the telescope at a distant empty patch of space. What emerged was the deep field image, a tapestry of distant galaxies. Hubble was looking back in time to some of the first galaxies and stars created. It revealed thousands of galaxies that hadn't been seen before, so the, the universe became, to our consciousness far richer after the Hubble Deep Field. It showed for the first time faint images of galaxies formed just a billion years after the Big Bang. 